All right, guys, man, thank you guys for just joining us today. This is going to be a little bit different. We're going to actually do a little bit of a podcast roundtable. Got some guests joining us today. And as you know, to my right, that crazy man, Zane Lopez, is always with us from the Team Lift Otaku Corner. You know how we do our thing on there. But today, we're bringing in some other guests. Now, James, we met you at Anime Austin. Yes, you did. And that was, we actually still have a video of you on our YouTube channel. Yeah. And we met you also, Winston. Yes, sir. Yeah, now, <laughs> this was our first meeting, but this is the first time we actually kind of get you guys into this. Right. right. Yeah. So our first ever podcast kind of meeting like this, and I, I really like it that it's you two guys first. All right, so, James, tell them a little bit about what you are and what uh, you do. Yeah, I am a YouTuber. It goes by the name of Pixelation. I do a lot of anime gaming kind of personality content, do, like, reviews and previews and stuff like right. that. Um, really... I'm really recent in terms of like my current format, but uh, so far so good. It seems like. Yeah, no, definitely been watching you. And plus, you and I have a great Twitter back and forth. Yeah, for sure. We got our thing going on over oh, there. Oh yeah. Then Winston, when I met you, you were PRing for this guy. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me something about what's going on with you. Man. Uh, well, I'm still PRing for him, but uh, right now it's kind of a transition uh, segment for me because I'm used I'm used to writing articles, just scripted like paper. And now I'm trying to make that transition to video, so I'm, I'm more in the middle of making that transition, but if you stay posted, you're eventually going to get videos out of me. Oh, cool, man. No, I saw, and then plus, there's a little thing that I saw with some skateboard art, and you and I got a deal about that. Oh, yeah. I just, I'm going to actually get a Roderick McDaniel Pro model. He's going to be the reason I get it. When I get it, I'm going to show it everywhere. I'll be proud of it and put it in a glass case. Okay. <laughs> so, man, we're going to kind of do this weird I mean, we're here, you know, at Anime CTX, we're here in Round Rock, and man, it's cool for us to kind of all, that podcast family and all of us, the media guys, to kind of meet together, mm-hmm. and especially now that this is, you know, this was the second one for Team Lynn, but it was kind of seeing like, oh my God, these are like all my distant cousins I'm running into yeah, that yeah. I hardly see, <laughs> or I see them at cons. So it was cool seeing you, but you and I have been talking about something. Yeah. We're going to kind of get into this a little bit. Okay. I like that you made that face. You already kind of know where this is going. I know exactly where this is going. Okay, so let's... I'm, I'm trying to figure out how we want to talk about this. Then, we can start with the fact that you want to start with the bad stuff or the semi-good stuff. I think I don't know if you can tell what I mean. The acquisition or the issue. Yeah, the acquisition or the <laughs> let's issue. Let's talk about both because they're both... Kind You're of, the and depending department. on where you are, right. it, it's going to be... It depends on where you fall. Right. right. So let's talk about... There's recent news um, at, what gosh was it this week yeah uh, last week I think yeah okay so in the last week yeah. right there so what happened was that there's been an announcement that Sony is basically going to have a big stake in Funimation yeah which is huge for us um, and a lot of people are thinking oh this could be great and then there's the naysayers and the articles out saying you know this is Sony's trying to ruin anime in yeah. America and I know that we keep seeing the naysayers but at the same time, we were kind of like, you know, hey, man, that's great that yeah. if it's big enough that Sony's going to make a play in the Funimation, right. that means we're probably going to get some more, some great licensing money right. coming in. We're going to be able to see a lot more stuff coming in dub. There's going to be, that's a win-win for anime fans. Then we got to talking about the other side of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is more personal to you. Yeah, 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 it is. So let's go ahead and talk about what Sony's done to you personally. Okay, so... <laughs> I, okay, so I have been a Sony fanboy my entire life. I, lo- I I was always a PlayStation guy. I never really bought an Xbox. It was, you know, I've been a loyal customer to Sony for years. Don't like their customer service too much, but that's 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 not a big deal. You know, it's whatever. Right there with you. Yeah, right there I mean, I've had some issues with them in the past with their customer service, but, you know, I don't necessarily let it bother me. They are, they've proven that they can handle, you know, the 95% of, the, of my gaming experience. Right. So... Now, I know that Sony isn't just gaming. You know, their entertainment, their music, their TV, they're all that. And that's where the Funimation thing comes in, is the TV, their, the, the TV and feature films for anime and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but then they also apparently have a music sector. And uh, for those of you who watch me, uh, you may uh, be confused as to why I haven't been posting very often. And uh, the reason for that is just because two, the, every video that I posted uh, right after Anime Austin was immediately blocked nearly worldwide one of them was worldwide the other one was just in five major first world countries mm-hmm. and they were by sony entertainment music japan so 
Uh, and those are the Monogatari videos. If uh, you know, if anybody heard about the heard about that panel, I tried to make that into a video series. And the first episode actually was able to be put on Vidney, but it's not on YouTube, and so it's like only a portion of my audience has seen it. Right. Um, so that being said, uh, I was I had developed a blood feud with Sony Entertainment Music Japan. Uh, yeah. So and it's gotten crazy, and we we're talking about it. So for everybody that kind of remembers this, you may have seen our videos. We did uh, a video for James. We covered his uh, basically the Monogatari uh, series yeah. opening. Yeah. And he broke them down into openings, and you know we had all the openings and the music for the openings. One of my favorite panels right. in the last year. I'll just tell you right oh, now. Thank you. I'm honored. Love that panel. I'm honored. And yeah, it was like the last year when I think about panels that are my top five. You and uh, Thomas Finney yeah. are in that top five. Right. You know where I really just like, wow, oh, I really enjoyed that person, right. not as a media person. Um, and the thing that got me about it was that I kept kind of waiting for that because I was telling my friends about it, yeah. and then they'd be like, oh, well, when's it coming? Oh, you know, we talked to him, we interviewed him when he's on there. I'll link it to you guys. And then I remember reading that first post on Twitter. Yeah. And I was like, I mean, James is really upset right now. <laughs> I'm not going to bother him. <laughs> Yo, like, if you're looking at him, like, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but, like, as he was saying, he's trembling, like, angry. Just, yeah, like, like, he's there's a, like, people may not notice this, but, <laughs> like, there was a part in here where this kid, the interview started with me here, and then I've been slowly, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm moving back a little. Go, bro, I know this has been, just, this has driven you crazy. It, it really has. And here's the thing, so... Let's go ahead and talk about it, because it is on Vidme. You sent me the link for it yeah. on Vidme. Um, and, you know, part two is actually, like, it's part two, actually, part two and part three are recorded. I went ahead and recorded, Bash recorded them, and so they are really just waiting for me to figure out what I'm going to do with them, because obviously I can't put the footage. Um, I'm questioning whether I can put the music, so I'm kind of like, do I just need to stick to screenshots or what? But, I mean, they're made, and they're waiting to be put up. It's just figuring out what to do with them. So have you, let, well, let's get into this, man, because, I mean, that was one of the weirdest parts that we've been seeing lately is that a lot of people are at that point where, you know, they're breaking it down yeah. and they're playing the video for it, and they're, instead of the music playing, uh, they may play, like, 30-second clips, yeah. which we all, every, I think everybody yes. that's a YouTuber, we all know that 30-second <laughs> clip law. Yeah. As long as we're under that 30 seconds, we can kind of. But see, even I, I did that, and it still was blocked. They blocked it even under 30. Damn. Now, now granted, uh, I know I mentioned earlier that it was the Monogatari series only. It wasn't actually, that was the, 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 first, the first one was actually a, uh, a top five OTPs video that I was making. And uh, I put it up on Facebook out of rebellion because YouTube, because Sony wouldn't let me have it up on YouTube. Uh, so it's available on my Facebook if you want to check it out. But it was still like, why is this happening to me? I know that YouTubers have to deal with this all the time, and I, I'm not saying I can't deal with it, but it's like, bam, 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 every single video. You know, usually you have a, like a, a few videos before you have to deal with it again, but every single time. No, man, they have basically, they know you by your first name. You know? yes. they are, like, his guys are point where we're like, okay, this is almost bordering on ridiculous. Yeah. Somebody at Sony is mad at James about this. And it's so weird because we don't get it. I yeah. mean, like, our whole thing is, I guess at the end of the day, is a lot of times we're free advertising. Right. Here. And our audience sometimes, you know, that we've noticed with the show, for people, you know, Zane and I talk about this all the time, people that listen to our show are people who may not have, their only touch with anime is us. Right. And then we may bring them something that will make them want to go watch that series. Right. And it, it always seems so weird to me how we have these really weird relationships with these studios. Right? Yeah. It's like, we love your product, we love talking about your product. But and what I find out is, like, the, the Japanese studios are really much better with us than big names like Sony, yeah, right. you know, with the American component. Yeah. Uh, it's like, they love it that we'll play their stuff and share their videos. But then you get into something where Sony Music Group or Universal Music Group owns it. Or I think of what Sony Music Group Japan and the Universal Music Group worldwide or international. Right. Yeah. They fall under. But then it's a whole different party when you fall under those guys' radar. Right. Yeah. So 
Vidme hasn't treated me though so far. Well, you know, I, I went ahead and I downloaded all of my James Plays Games videos who, that were already made on YouTube, and I downloaded those and I scheduled them for release on Vidme, and mm -hmm. uh, they, I put them release every day would be a new one, and I got a few regular, uh, you know, uh, usual. Uh, people mm -hmm. uploading it and, and, and commenting on it. I found that to be pretty interesting. It, it wasn't a huge uh, a huge thing or anything, but I did manage to get, uh, I would assume, a few fans just because, like, the same user would, like, upvote me. Uh, and and then, you know, based off that, I, I assume maybe it's because of that, but, like, whenever I was taking my break because of, uh, of all this, all this um, I got a comment on my Instagram that was like, hey, um, you know, you don't post anymore what happened where are you at and i'm like i've never had someone do that and it was so i felt so bad i was like i gotta do something so you know and i was in the and i assume you wanted to talk about this but i was in the middle of playing persona yeah. 5 and i was like every waking moment so like making videos kind of became the back burner because i was like okay i'm up before work i gotta go play persona 5 okay i'm back at work or i'm back from, back from work i gotta go play persona 5 and uh you know I, I'm ashamed, but you know what? It, I don't care. <laughs> you, you already know where I'm at on this. There's yeah. 116 hours oh, of my life in that game. Yeah. And that was I'm just close. the first play. I, I'm I close. haven't even touched it yet. I'm, I'm currently playing like The Last Guardian. I'm not even like ready for it. How was that, by the way? Yeah. No, great game. First of all, and that's one of our things, man. We always do like our, our votes for our game of the year. That's one of our big things, and yeah. it's going to be a show we do. But Persona 5, I can tell you right now, has locked up that first place yeah. vote for me oh, yeah. for game of the year. Oh, yeah. It's my personal game of the year. Now, there's some great contenders in there already, uh, but, man, I'm telling you, Persona 5, there's, it's nothing like it. And what shocks me, I don't know if you guys saw this, but uh, Famitsu, the magazine, yeah. they had a poll, and Persona 5 was voted number one RPG of all time by its readers. Really? Number one RPG of Damn. all time by its readers, and that ah. was just last week. And you know, like, I'm, you know, I'm close to hitting that 116-hour uh, thing, but I'm still in my second playthrough, um, just because I haven't, uh, I've been skipping all the story just for my second playthrough because I already know what happens. I'm really just focused on maxing out those confidants, getting, you know, getting everything I need, uh, all the trophies and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, you know, I find that it, I can see that it is such a good game, and you know, I see now. You know, at first I was like, oh, I don't, I don't really want to buy it because Atlas is being really dumb with their, with their policy. But after playing it, I see what they're to me. I see what okay. they mean. Let's kind of talk because we talked <laughs> about this on the podcast. So this is one weird thing. Uh, Brandon and I, before I don't think I even did this episode, but we did this one with Brandon. And one of the coolest things was that we kind of brought in the thing where we said, Hey, look, we're gonna do. Uh, we're going to talk about how Atlas is being. They're blocking everybody from playing this game live. They just didn't want you, you know, hey, you can play up to this point, yeah. but you can't show the ending, which I was cool. I, I'm yeah. not going to show the ending. I get that, but it's like streaming's a thing now. Yeah. Like, you can't. No. Like, it that's was a, such that's, a that's archaic a policy that they put up, and it was like yeah. you couldn't go past a certain chapter. Right. Yeah. Like, they blocked it all, and it was like, crazy blocking well, like you know what what i found interesting was that they they had atlas put out that post that originally it said you couldn't go past july something mm -hmm. and then they fixed it so you, you can't go past in november and that's fine november is around the time when the final lap starts heating There's up and, stuff and that you want to kind of block come yeah november. yeah especially since the, it's literally the most i would say it's the most crazy final chapter of a persona game yet and i've only played three four and five so that's based my that's my knowledge no, you're right. Yeah. That is, it, it, I would say, even out of some Shin Megami, yeah. out of the whole Shin Megami Tensei Persona universe, Five has one of the wildest freaking rides for right. an ending that you're going to get in right. any game. And so my thing was that, you know, they're saying, hey, you can't stream past a certain date. You know, that's fine. I mean, but why do you block the entire game? Like, the, the, on the PS4, the entire game is a block scene. It's like, if you want people not to stream past a certain point, make that certain point where the block scene starts. They, oh, have, yeah, they no. have access to do that. They just don't do it. Yeah, they. it was really weird how they did it. And I was, in fact, because I knew I was going to drop that much, it was going to be our stream. Yeah. That was just going to be our whole Twitch channel. Was, hey, you're going to watch me from the time I created, go in, the whole thing. Everything was going to be open to you. And we were just going to stop when it got to that point. Right. And the entire game 
starts and it's blocked. Yeah. This whole scene's blocked. Well, actually, what I found is that apparently the first, uh, this is not a spoiler because it's the first scene of the game, but right. when you first go into the casino, um, in the very beginning, um, you can record up until the point when uh, the interrogation starts. At that point from on, is so so they, they clearly they were like, hey, we'll let them stream the first what ten minutes of the game, and then hey, oh yeah, no, now it's gone now. Yeah, okay, <laughs> no, we're done. You're done. You um, get no more. Almost like they wanted you to like get out. Like so, this is what the game looks like. This is how the combat works. And Bam, blah, done. But you can't get no story. <laughs> yeah, no man. It no was, story. It was no story for you. And then they were like, but it was such an outrage, and it was kind of neat for that outrage to happen yeah. because then they came back and they were like, you know what? We underestimated the fans, right? And we're sorry, and you can do this much more. But still, the PS4. It still felt like they were like, "We're sorry you got offended." You know, it's, it just seemed like they were it was like a, like a cheap uh, apology. Like, you know, we're, we're still holding to our guns. You, you still like can't the, scream, or otherwise we're gonna block you. The, but you know what? The, the South Park. We're sorry. <laughs> yeah, it was sorry. so much that. Uh, it was so much that. I was like, Alex, you know, I'm still gonna buy your games, but I'm so mad at you yeah. right now. No, they just definitely pumped us out. I just borrowed it from a friend. I was like, you know, I don't want to patronize him for this game. I'm just gonna borrow it from a friend. You know. And, See, uh, I, no, they got I'm all salty. Money. I'm salty. Yeah, I'm usually petty.com yeah. on everything. But no, on this one, it was like it's like that one girl that you know. You know, I can't stand her. Yeah. But I'm still taking her to prom. That's, yeah. That's me and Atlas when it comes to persona. Like, I can't stand you in your petty ways. That, but I'm taking you out to dinner and we'll get you a cassage. Cause that I said, you. I'm I'm very torn though. I want to. I kind of want to buy it now. Now in hindsight, because I want to support the you know, the cast. Like I don't know if you, if you you know, but yeah, the cast is like absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I actually know someone, uh, kind of uh, someone online that I've, I've you know talked to mm -hmm. very often. Is actually she plays uh, on, mm -hmm. and then uh, you know uh, the voice of Taiga in Toradora is uh, Morgana. So it's like the cast is really phenomenal. I'm really a big fan of them, and I, I want to you know I know that's not their fault for Atlas's you know because I know it's not even Atlas USA. It's mostly just Atlas Japan because they're like very finicky about JRPGs. But it's like, so I don't want to. I don't want it to seem like I'm not supporting Atlas USA because I think they have no. They had no say in the matter. Yeah. But no, it's just that's something we found out. Like a lot of times, I think a, a lot of, as we say, one of the coolest things I've heard here today is that you know Jerry Joel said yeah. the Western audience is so fickle. Yeah. Yeah. And we are. We're so fickle. Yeah. And I, I don't think people understand it that, and it's a weird dynamic that the West has with the Japanese company. Because Japanese companies run things a certain way. Yeah. And that policy doesn't have to make sense to us. I think the one that's really big for this is Nintendo. It's yeah. probably yeah. the most known in the West. Yeah. Is, you know, hey, you know, we're not going to make enough of these consoles, but we see the demand for them. But now that there's this big demand, we're not going to make any more of the consoles. What we did oh. is what we did. And we're like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, okay. it, it's like... Um, it's that backlash because like you said like while there's a lot of well-received titles on the wii u mm -hmm. like how many people bought a wii u right. so, like, okay like so we're not gonna make that mis exactly like, we're not gonna What's make that mistake again <laughs> and so now they have the switch and everyone's like oh we want to switch it's like cool do you really because i'm not sure and so now we're stuck in that loop of everybody wants one and no one can get one right here's my thing and, and like i think the story that nintendo has always told us is like well, we almost took a bath on the DS, you know. And when the DS came out, it was big, it was bulky, it wasn't comfortable, it wasn't that, it wasn't backlit. It was a crappy handheld console. Yeah. And then they were like, well, we're taking it in the shorts on this. We're, we're going bankrupt behind this. And then all of a sudden they made the DS Lite. And that, that total remodel was just an amazing handheld system man. It, yeah. like you know it's literally like almost a couple tweaks and now like yeah well it's in the guinness book of world records it's the greatest selling handheld video game system of all time so it it broke all these sales records and they were freaking printing money okay so nintendo it's hard for people to say oh they say well we we took it in the shorts and we almost went bankrupt nobody believes that story <laughs> right I, I remember watching people fight to get Wii's, yeah. okay? And then, you know, you decide to make a Wii U. And then you say you almost took it in the shorts on the Wii U. And then you're like, well, we're going to make a Switch. And people can't get enough of the Switch. And then you make the classic console, and you don't make enough of those. So what it seems to me is 
when you hear there's some demand, quit making the crappy system and ramp up the, the good system. It, just, it kills me because like it's not even like, oh, nobody can get um, like the NES Classic anymore. No, they canceled. They, they made them and were like, we're done. We're yeah. done. And then like a few months later, so we're going to do the same thing for the Super Nintendo now. And it's like, everyone's like, well, shoot, like, I'm not going to get this one either. Now, this might be an unpopular <laughs> opinion, but and I almost made a video about this, but I figured it was too mean, so I'm going to kind of, uh, you know, subdue you it a little bit. Okay. No, you can say it here. Okay. You can say it here. Okay, so um, I feel like the people who are, I don't blame anyone for going crazy over the NES Classic or SNES Classic. That's fine. If you want it, you want it. That's just how it is. But don't pretend like it's... A unique thing. Don't pretend like you can't go get a, uh, a Retron 5 and play the exact same games. They are doing it for shallow reasons. They're doing it because they want the way it looks. Nostal well, that and like nostalgia. Like, yeah. Nostalgia is like. Yeah, but. Nostalgia but, but, in America is the biggest money printer. Yeah. I mean, we can never get around the nostalgia feature. But, but even, if you, even if you didn't want to buy the Retron 5. I mean, I know it's not exactly popular to emphasize their emulation, you know? I mean, it's, I, and you can cut this out if you want to, but, I mean, it, it, I won't even talk about it anymore. No, but, uh, we won't cut you out. Okay, 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 <laughs> okay, okay, because, okay. I mean, really, when it comes down to it, yes, it's not popular to talk about emulation, but it, it happens. Everyone does it, you know, even if they don't do it regularly, it's it's something that people do. It's, it's easy to access, and it's easy for people to do. It's not something that they're trying to stop. Uh, you know, so that being said, if you don't want to buy a Retron 5, if you don't want to buy one of those other consoles that plays 10 consoles in one console, don't, just then... You're, if you want to buy an NES Classic or SNES Classic, do it. That's fine. But understand that you're doing it because you like the way the outside looks. Yeah, it's, I mean, like I told you, it's that nostalgia. Yeah, it's, it's, it's that, nostalgia. Nostalgia it's kills. It's that sprinkle of nostalgia on there. Yeah. Nostalgia's going to sell it. And so, like, it, yeah, I mean... Think it, about it. There's only, like, 30 games on there. Right. And, like, there's a, and, uh, like it's, the, it's the core ones you can think about. Right. Like, if you think about the NES, yeah. what are the games you think about? They're on that NES. Right. There's still like a hundred other ones that someone's like, oh, I wish they had put this on there. I wish they had put this on there. Well, go buy you a retcon, go to some retro game store and yeah. get it for like five bucks. And the other thing was this too, man. Like, I know we all run these HDMI TVs. So yeah. even if I went about the old system, now I got to find something extra Converter. to try to plug these old cables into right. so that I can plug that box into the HDMI jack. And so I know that a lot, and let's face it, Video game companies make lots of money yeah. making peripherals for people who aren't tech savvy or are lazy. Yeah. American gamers, we are probably some of the laziest people. You make a great point. People could go emulate every one of these yeah. games and play it with those old controllers yeah. on a PC if yeah. they wanted to. Yeah. It's kind of like dating your cousin. I don't personally want to do it, <laughs> yeah. but I'm not knocking you if you right. live in Arkansas or want to do it. <laughs> See, see, the We're thing not is, in Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need that kind of talk. Yeah, I'm just saying, man. But see, the thing is, and that that being said, you know, I understand. I, I that's how I used to feel, and I still do to a point. But I also understand that apparently the the classics, you know, they have games built into it. Apparently, yeah. And I think can't you like plug in a USB and play the emulator games if you wanted to or something? It's some no. About no. With one of the systems For, that you one? could play some emulation software through one of the systems. I don't know which one does. Yeah, it, yeah. But. Oh, there's so many of these systems out like, there. Like, I remember reading, like, or seeing videos of people who were, like, almost, almost in a sense, jailbreaking the, the NES Classic yeah. and loading, like, a hundred more games on there. And yeah. it's like... I've seen people that do that. Yeah. Like, I know a guy who got a system just to do that. Yeah. And so that being said, you know, you can, you know, it, 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 in hindsight, you know, yeah, that that that's how I feel about that. But that being said, you can... If you, if you do buy it, you know, it is, uh, I guess it's a more frugal option because you're, you know, you may be paying like 80 bucks, what, it's like 80, 79 sometimes. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I bought two of them and sold one of them for like $200. Yeah, <laughs> no, man, you're not even the, you're not the worst that I've heard somebody sell one Oh, no, like I've seen some, some crazy numbers for those things. And like per people I personally know now, I can say, okay, you did good for yourself when right. you sold it. But that's not the worst. I saw somebody like I was like, man, people would went and say, look at their kids and go, okay, one of you's not going to college, or one of you's going to have to go to a crappy junior college because daddy's got to have this system. And I'm like, you're not a good parent. Okay, I'm not going to say that now. But yeah, like I said though, you know, you spend eighty bucks on an NES or SNES classic. You know, it's understandable because in reality, you are going to spend money on the actual games themselves if you buy yeah. a Retron. 
And so it's like, well, okay. So the, the options are to buy a Retron and then buy a bunch of games or buy the classic and get games built in. Mm -hmm. And I see why they're doing that. In reality, it's not just for aesthetics, but, you know, in, it, it's, it's it kind of is. Yeah, it's I mean, it's a, yeah. It's a tiny one. And I mean, apparently the corded versions are so the cords are too short. Oh yeah, no, like that cord's like half, like that. Yeah. Long. yeah. It's so short. So I think when it comes down to it, you want to buy one, buy one. I'm not gonna judge you for buying one, but I am gonna silently be like, you could have done this all along. You didn't have to wait for this. Yeah, you really <laughs> did. And we, I think a lot of us, we all think that. Yeah. And I, and what I loved about it is, we think it. But you actually were ballsy enough to say it, so <laughs> stop off to you, man. Maybe they'll vote for me for president. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you just got to break it till like it is. No, man. sometimes you just got to make gaming great again. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I, I've been trying to get a red hat that says, let's make EA skate again, okay? Yes. That's the hat I want. I is, want that to, EA skate I hope again. that happens. Uh, yeah. I just want that hat, so when I come in there and go, look, I'm not saying, you know, I love the company, you know, they pay me a lot of money to work there, but... I, I think stay. I think there should be a counter hat that's like says, uh, "I'm with Hawk." <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yes, you may have just determined what we're doing next summer. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna just be putting those hats out there and say, "I think they're both the same company." Quit judging us. <laughs> we gotta go get new BMWs. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of, I, I don't know if um, y'all watched, you know, E3 and everything. Y'all watched E3. Oh, yeah. The um, what do y'all think? What is y'all's most anticipated title from? That's coming up from E3. For our company? Or oh, from anything. Oh, EA or otherwise. Like anything that, oh, so my, oh. Yeah, just to personal. After, after watching favorite. E3, what was that one game yeah. that you were like, I'm ready for this? Monster Hunter World. Ah, uh, okay. Mm. There we go. I am so ready to hunt monsters, like 1080p plus, 4K, whatever the oh. hell. <laughs> it's coming to PC. Like, the only, the only equivalent they have is this other game that I can't think of offhand, but it's basically the same thing, but it's more cell shaded, more cartoony looking. Same kind of concept though, but Monster Hunter World. I've played Monster Hunter since Freedom Unite on PSP, and I bought every single one since then except for like two, yeah. like because they were just upgrades from the prior one. Right. Yeah. But Monster Hunter World is gonna be my bag. I'm gonna lose days on Monster Hunter World. Oh jeez. That's the lock up for you. You That's locked it up on that. One. <laughs> there That's me. Okay. Talk about unpopular opinions. I'm about to say the one that's really gonna get me just ridiculed. Um, I was more disappointed with this E3 than previous ones. That's fair. That was great. And, oh, and it was like, I think there's been so much hype in E3 that we go into it. It's like a holiday for us. Yeah. It's the mecca for that's, gaming, you know? That's, oh, gosh. Yeah. yeah. It's our, to me, I told everybody, it's like, that's my second Christmas. Yeah. Is I love Christmas and then I love E3. Right. And that's my second Christmas where I find out where I'm going to go. Things, find out what you're going to get for Christmas. Oh, God. Yeah. I knew. <laughs> yeah. I knew where I was going with this. And then the thing was, like, Sony has had a reputation for, let's just be honest, they have been spanking Xbox's ass yeah. at E3 ever since the announcements of the new system. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm a guy, I own both consoles, so I'm, I am trying not to be the Sony fanboy that I am <laughs> deep down. Yeah. You know, when you own the PS3, the Vita, I had a PSP Go, the PSP in all iterations, the 1000, 2000, 3000 series, yeah. and I own a PS4. I think it's pretty safe to say, yeah. yeah. But yeah. then I play JRPGs. I, I mean, that's the it. only console for them. Yeah, yeah. Well, it I mean, is. It's not like Xbox. I mean, yeah, great. You gave me Blue Dragon however many years ago that was. <laughs> um, Infinite Undiscovery was convoluted like any good JRPG should be, but still you didn't do anything with it. And so Xbox systems aren't going to give me the games I'm going to play. Right. And I have an Xbox system, but I can tell you, Outside of, you know, Quantum Break and maybe Sunset Overdrive because I did love Sunset Overdrive. Yeah, that game was fun. That game was over the top fun. But it was, let's face it, it was Punk Rock, Ratchet and Clank. It I know really, what it's It was know. Punk Rock, Ratchet and Clank with a little bit of Jet Set Radio sprinkled in there. It was. <laughs> man, great description. I mean, and that soundtrack kept me entertained, but man, that was the thing. Like this year, I was watching E3 and it was like, oh, that's cool. But would I drop a lot of hours in it. Right. Oh, that's neat, and I'm probably going to get it. God of War, I think, is a, a no-brainer. I'm going to end up with God of yeah. War. I have to know the story. How, scoring, right. how it continues. Yeah, I have to know. <laughs> Do you think it's going to be a continuation or just a fresh reboot? Or I think it's a reboot. Okay. I that's don't. 
it, I think it's a reboot because I think the, I, it's a reboot in the sense that instead of going with Greek, Greek mythology like they started with, mm -hmm. at this point they're tackling Norse mythology. Right. That's like what DMC it looks like. DMC versus the previous series. Right. <laughs> I wondered yeah. if maybe but it was like. It also uh, looks like it's play. It, it plays less a hack and slash like God of War and more hack and slash like Dark Souls. It's got a lot of. It's got a lot that's of. That's what it's looking like. Though. I don't want to say that and then someone hands me my ass. Right. Right. Yeah, that's not the way bad. it looks, it it's it's still hack and slash e. But the way it looks, it looks like it's gonna play more like Dark Souls. Yeah. Mm. Oh, you know what? First of all, that's not a bad thing. I mean, let's face it. But it, I have another weird opinion that nobody likes. I'm not a big Dark Souls fan. Never mind. But, okay, I started <laughs> with Demon Souls when it was on the PS3, yeah. and I really a lot of times play video games to relax. I've never <laughs> thrown a Souls game in and thought. This, this is, is enjoyable. Like, and that, I'm really relaxed. The Soul series is work. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's 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 a like that's a job. <laughs> Bro, it is. It's like I love the Souls. Yeah, I know. Oh, our friend okay. Belly, a friend of our show, man, a huge you know listens to the podcast and has really been supportive of us. Um, he's always like he's platinum. I think Dark Souls too. He got the platinum trophy for it. And, God. yeah, you know, I'm like, That's too many man hours, well, man. it makes sense when you meet people that say, hey, I kind of like bondage. Oh, you're a Souls fan, huh? <laughs> <laughs> like Souls. That makes sense now. I understand why you like getting, you know, spanked with you think a, they'd a say, uh, you Sorry, you think they'd say uh, you're a fan of uh, Dear Automata? Oh, yeah. so, hey. hey. I had to back up. <laughs> that's that's so, that's my girl. Yeah. So one thing you were saying is like that while you're trying to not be biased, you are kind of seriously on Sony's side in the sense that they make the games you want to play. They do. They make a and lot of stuff I want to play. And I was I, kind of disappointed by their... I understand where you're coming from because, like you, I... Well, at this point, I own all the current consoles. Yeah. And, like, I try not to be biased with it because, like, I genuinely just enjoy video games. But I've noticed that there's a lot of spots where, like, I'm not feeling a lot of AAA titles coming out. And, like, indie games have been picking up the slack. Hardcore. Oh, yeah. And so one game I saw at E3, I've been waiting for for two years now, and that is Cuphead. Yes. That is the one title. I'm, I'm kind of waiting for Spider-Man, but, like, Cuphead is the one I've been waiting for for two years. Well, let's and get I'm into ready this. for that. Cuphead is probably the, the most requested, most anticipated title coming to the Xbox One. Yeah. And it's not a AAA title. The yeah. only other game I can think close to that is like Sea of Thieves and even still they're, it's not talked about nearly as much. I want it but yeah no like I know more people right now that are Cuphead, Cuphead and it looks like a cartoon and even then it's still one of those things where we know yeah it's going to be on PC but I'm going to enjoy that right. on like, console. Just, just the fact that you know how much work went into this game like all the drawings in the game are cell drawings. Like oh, they're yeah. digitally transferred, but they're all cell draws. Right. So yeah, no, they're that's, all cells. I just, want this game so bad. Yes, I want. And it looks like an old 1930s cartoon, and yeah. there's nothing like it on the market. Yeah, and, not, it, and it's a platformer. Yeah. Yeah, it, that game's gonna be gold. I was, I, I'll be <laughs> honest, man. And then the thing that shocked me, you know, like I work at EA, and, and EA press conference shocked me because I was not prepared for two games that they showed us. Like, had no idea these games were even in development, and I work at the company. <laughs> uh, they showed us Anthem, yeah. which got a lot of hype. Cool. Honestly, yeah. Anthem, I, I wasn't too, like, thrilled about it. It was... Uh, Let me guess. Did you say, hey, that looks like Destiny with a little bit of Titanfall and, <laughs> and some more and Destiny some super awesome gliding, yeah. Yeah, because I, mean, I kept thinking the same thing. I was like, oh, man, so I guess EA bought the rights to Destiny and it were... It were Oh, but there's, we're all going to be doing drop in, drop out co op. Didn't Destiny already do that? <laughs> but it looks good, but don't those look like the same suits we wore in Titanfall 2 when we jumped in our mech? So I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm going to need to see more on that because, like, right now, I'm not sold on that. I'm like, I might play it, they but didn't it, it's show not going to be. No, the yeah. only gameplay they show is a dude flying. And, and, and yeah. not only that, but the, uh, the the demo, the people who were playing the demo were the kind of people, like, I think they played uh, they're the same kind of people who played uh, Sea of Thieves last year, where they were like, no real humans play games like this. No. They're, they're like, oh, sweet, we got this thing. And I'm no. like, no, you don't do that. Look, you say, yes, you know? Like, think about, like, Sea of Thieves. It's like, I've, I've been, like, on and off with, like, the... Um, the beta, and I'm not supposed to talk about like, how like it looks and all that stuff. Right. I will say though that there is like a point where like we got we got stuck with something we didn't know what to do with, and like 
our only reaction is like, fuck it, adventure, grab it, let's go. And it just, <laughs> and it ruined the entire game, but it was just so fun to have like this, like the best thing about that game is just playing with friends. Right. Like, yeah. that's not going to be a fun single player fr- game. If you have friends to play with, it's going to be a blast. Okay, <laughs> let's talk about a game that you're going to have to have friends to play, and that was No Way Out. The co-op oh, game, which is all couch co-op. Play. That, yeah, another that indie title. Another, another indie, indie title. title. That's a, even though EA's behind that, that's an indie developer that's bringing that to us. And the thing that pissed me off is I thought about my friends and I went, I don't trust any of these jackasses <laughs> to help me with this game. Girl. Yeah, bro, really? Really? <laughs> but really? See, one thing, I want to go back to the uh, what he was saying about indie, and it's not exactly an indie, because what really... E3 to me, I you know I told you before I'm a Sony Sony guy and mm-hmm. I, and I still am to a point, but I had to concede it to Microsoft though, because of the fact that they yeah the, we, we me and him have this ongoing joke of 4K everything <laughs> 4K. Was, 4K everything was 4K and, and it was like okay we <laughs> get it you're 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 technologically advanced we get it Scorpio or <laughs> you are Xbox modern. One X whatever <laughs> anyway but so that being said despite all that I had to give it to, to them but uh, you know. Be, I have in my taste, in my in my gaming history. You know, there's one series that I've loved beyond a shadow of a doubt. And if you watch my YouTube channel, you'll you'll know what the series is. But um, and and, and this is a series where once the Sony conference ended, I was like, okay, it's time to hang up the hat. We're not getting another game. It's fine. I'll just you know I need to just stop because if I do if I don't stop now, I'm going to go insane. So then the next next morning, they announced that they are that. Um, uh, Cyber Connect and Bandai Namco or Namco Bandai, whatever one it is, are making the .dot hack GU last recode, which is the .dot hack GU HD collection with now we now we know is actually four games instead of three. The uh, yeah. and so I'm like I don't know if either, any any of y'all played that. Oh no, all of them. All of them. Okay. Like I hate the fact that there's a lot of kids nowadays that don't know what .dot hack yes. is and have the nerve to go. Oh, Sword Art Online is the greatest. It's the original yeah. idea. And I was like, I think there should be a law that says I can punch a kid in the face <laughs> if he thinks that Sword Art is a better series or game. Or original. Um, or original. <laughs> or original. Just I mean, or hat. I enjoyed oh the God. show, yeah. but okay. I love Dot Hat. Like, yeah. We went to watch the movie Ordinal Scale as a team. Yeah. We love the show. I've watched every episode of it. And, you know, I'm not like Mother's Basement. He rips Sword Art and he hates it. And he's known for hating it. Yeah. And I'm like, Hey, that's why some people voted Trump and some people voted Hillary. We all <laughs> wait, have different opinions. Wait, 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 are you saying that someone who hates SAO is trash? Because, uh... I'm, no, I'm not. I'm just saying... I mean, we'll say you're trash if that's what you're implying. <laughs> well, yeah. well, well, it might know, not be related. Well, well, you know, they also... They, they, they have a special name for people uh, who like SAO, for people who uh, who think that Emilia was better than Rem. And it's, we call it a garbage can. <laughs> I will I will trash on people who want the Amelia ship all day. Rem is Bay. I, I got it. I got girl. Miss girl. Um. <laughs> you guys can't see. Me. <laughs> you can't see it. Reed just. I wish I had my camera going. Ever. I could have. <laughs> Reed knows what I'm about to say because he knows. I, look, I'll tell you right now. I will go to a clan rally and twerk and set the cross on fire myself before I will ever give one doubt of love to Rim. Take that where you need to take that. You deposit that in whatever bank will cash that check. I was all for the Emily. I wanted Emily to be the girl. And everybody was like, Rim, Rim, what? Did, did you, folks did you not, not watch episode 18? To, did you not remember in episode 2 where she killed us? I was, <laughs> I was like, I'm not... You cannot kill me one time, and then I come back to life and think, oh, this relationship's going to work. <laughs> no, hey, you can't. Oh, such a thing as character development, man. Yeah, the yeah, that's character not, was, that's she not. was a killer. That was the character. You're talking about you want a yandere. Uh, <laughs> but, but no, but, but it's entire 18, entire episode 18, you know, she's like, you know, basically, Subaru, you know, you remember Subaru was like about to, about to just jump off a bridge and come back to life, you know? He like hates his life, he's so depressed, PTSD from dying and resetting like over and over and over. And then the entire episode is like, hey, you are valued, you are loved, I, have, I, I want to plan out my life with you. I want to, you know, we're gonna have kids and grandkids and all that. And then he's like, okay, I'm better, screw you, I'm gonna, screw you, Ram, I'm gonna go find to save Amelia. You know, it's like, you just saved me from my depression and PTSD, but, you know, f- fuck you. You know, it's like... You know why? Why? Because she killed him once. <laughs> and you can't get past that. You can't get right. past you killed me like, one time. Like, you're cool, but you killed me. 
I ain't letting that slide. Yeah, I can't <laughs> let that slide. That's like you stabbed my mama at Thanksgiving. How am I going to let that slide? I can't be in no relationship with somebody that stabbed my mama at Thanksgiving, baby. <laughs> my, I, my family's going to remember that. Like, I know him, man. He was all rim. And when he said it to me, I was like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sure. Like, okay. the fact that our podcast, that the Otaku version of Team Lift exists, this tells me, we can make it work anybody can do it, okay? Because when he told me Rim was best girl, I just kind of looked at him and just like, he's already failed the interview for this show and he has no idea. No, it's been our thing. It's our thing. I understand. I. But do you? I think we have another show. There's a whole other topic right here. This is a whole other episode. We're going to step off of that. So, so, you think we want to talk about, now, since we're already on the topic of anime, you want to talk about upcoming season? Yeah. Anything like that? Um, I don't know if you have time. I actually kind of want to bring you guys back to yeah. that. Okay. I do. I want to do, I actually think we need to set up something we can do like a group call. Okay. Because we just did an episode yeah. where oh, we really? talked about where we are midway in the season. Oh, right. But we were thinking, hey, we want to bring in other people. Right. We're going to send out the list, and then maybe you guys can come in and do the end of the season review with us. Oh, that'd be cool. I think that'd be cool because so, then we can kind of talk about where we are. On that, we're talking about um, applying for a panel at one of the upcoming cons, right? And then maybe talking about it there. Yeah, all because right. we have votes, so we'll send you all the information. Right. We're, you're gonna have to vote. We did some weak shit at Court and Brandon. <laughs> uh, we <laughs> are picking waifu of the season. Oh yeah. So there's some votes that we're gonna. There's, we'll send you your voting. I don't list. know <laughs> her name yet. I don't know her name yet, but I know who I picked. Okay. I don't. I can't remember. I can't remember any of the names, but I know exactly who it is. Well, we found out that I have a problem. Like all the women in anime I like are grown women. Like I have no high school girl waifu. Like I like women who are like can go to bars with me. Oh yeah. I like women that understand that daddy's got to go to bed early because he's got a real job. Well, I like those women. Like I, uh, like I, I romanced uh, Kawakami in my first playthrough of Persona 5. I mean, you, can, you just can't, you can't, you know. got to go for a grown woman. Man. Yeah. There's nothing a high school girl can do for me except maybe babysit some kids so I can take her mama out. That's all we can get her to do. <laughs> like, literally, like, I'm, not, I'm not a big wife in person. And, like, the one person I've ever openly said is, my, like, I, I think of as a waifu is, like, Armstrong's sister from uh, Brotherhood. Yeah. Like, anybody, Cause she's just she's just OP. Yeah. She's just like I'll fight you, and I'm gonna beat you, and I'm like I can get down with that. Yeah. <laughs> I like so 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 wait hold on like so, so wait hold on now now hold on now you're okay with someone killing you? No. But you're not okay with someone kicking your ass. No. I mean I'm, you are no, you are okay. No. Reverse, reverse, I'm okay with a woman who could fight. Like she if like I'm not gonna straight up just go fight me a woman. But I'm okay. I like me a woman who could defend herself. Like a woman yeah, who's just I'm like strong. Like, like she's like. She's like she's a standard brown kind of female man. <laughs> Tell me more. This is the thing. It's, I'm not even. I'm just gonna say it. there's a cultural thing with black men. We like women that are ride or die chicks. We are not even the most stuck guy. We're the two least stuck guys in this building. But we like a ride or die woman. We want a woman that's like, babe, it's about to go down. Only thing she needs to ask me is. Do I need to take off my earrings and what shoes do I need to put right. on for this? Now, I'm not saying that every black man is like that. 99.9% .9 of it. Urkel wanted to ride or die chick. Because Laura was ride or die back in the day on Family Matters. I don't care what nobody. She was a ride or die chick. <laughs> she was, though. Yeah, and we like and that. That's it, right? We want a woman that's going to be there and it's like, I will whoop ass, but she will put her back to mine and we're just going to fight everybody. Yeah, I, I, I got and wanted me a strong ass woman, and that's what I—that's what I see in Armstrong's sister. But she's I don't stronger want no than sister that's gonna her, kill me. No, like I'm not. Like I don't like. If I like if I fuck up, and she whoops my ass and goes, "Now why did you, why did I whoop your ass?" I'm fine with that. Now if I fuck up, she goes, "I'm gonna stab you." No, no, we got <laughs> I'm out. Relationships over. Gone. The ass, if the you ass, ass like that's gonna that. leave my house because you got a knife. No, we can't even be in no a relationship. Nope. I can't get no good insurance like that. <laughs> they playing too much with the insurance because you mess with a woman that might kill me, man. I can't I, do that. I can, I can, I can get my ass whooped. I'm not gonna take death. Yeah, I'm not taking death. <laughs> I'm not taking death. <laughs> well, I, I guess, I guess in reality, I guess it, it all comes down to the fact that, I mean, no matter how we, me and you feel, they won. You know, <laughs> I mean, they won. Right there. Right there. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the one OTP we ain't, we ain't gonna win. That's the first team lift time that James has never admitted to see on this show, man. That's, I mean, this is the one. I mean, yeah, look, you gotta, you gotta understand. We're gonna be lucky to get a season two of ReZero, let alone look to get a complete overhaul in that department. So, yeah. you know, we have our dreams, and that's all that matters. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and Rim is huge. I mean, like, that is the number one character on everything. 
Okay. So cool, man. We're getting a sign that we're running a little long. Man, this has been fun. Absolutely. It was oh great. my god. Yeah. No, you guys are coming back to do oh, yeah. the podcast with Most us. Most Okay. So we may. You know what we should do? Next time we're at a con together, this is going to be our thing that we have to do every con. That works. We have to do a round table every con we, that we go to. I'm cool with that. Super okay. Cool. So, okay. Yeah, this has been way too much fun. Yeah. All right. Cool. So, man, guys. Once again, thank you for supporting Team Lynn. Please make sure to get on there. If you're not following him, it's at Pixelation underscore. Underscore. Yeah, underscore. Okay, yeah. That's him on Twitter. And, and I think if we go to your Twitter, we can get to everything, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it's just Pixelation everywhere, really. Okay, so even on YouTube, yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. And, man, you know what? I think I think I still have the links, but I don't know if I put them on the team, at the Go Team Lift right. But I'll put the one for the Vidme. Yeah. I'll put the links because I really love that panel. Something I should probably mention, I always have to mention, there's a C in pixelation. People always try to do like the actual word pixelation and it never right. comes up in. So make sure you put the P I X C E L A T I O N and then you'll get you'll get me. Perfect, man. <laughs> Great mention because you know they'll be like, I can't find him. Right. Yeah. Y'all, y'all did his name wrong. Y'all spelled it wrong. No, we spelled it right. Yeah. You just, just don't know how we spelled it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Man, guys, thank y'all so much for coming on, man. I know, here's the thing the camera's going to turn off, the episode's going to be over this conversation ain't done <laughs> this is probably two more hours worth of just us yeah. goofing off but, but man next time we got to get you guys on the show yeah, we'll send sure. you the information for that and Winston, keep us up to date man, I, I know will. you got I'm, some things I'm, going on I have a whole bunch of ideas I just need to put them into motion right <laughs> and let us know when they go into motion we want you back on the show to talk about them okay most definitely I know how it is you can't talk about a lot of stuff that you got going on there because yeah. some of you are thieves and you steal everything that we say <laughs> But we still love you, and thank you for subscribing. <laughs> we love you, but yeah, we ain't telling you nothing until we do it. <laughs> you got to sign an NDA. All right, yes, yeah, seriously. Man, guys, thanks so much. Thank man, you. Best thank of you. luck to you. And uh, you guys are going to stay through CTH. You guys are not leaving until tomorrow either, right? Yeah. All right, sweet. Once again, this has been another episode of Team Lift Podcast, and this was our first anime roundtable. And I, I'm going to say it was successful. It was successful. I loved it, man. It was a lot of fun.